Okay, everyone. So we are going to be starting uh, the Unity portion of the workshop. Um, I will prefix by saying I'm not going to be getting into material creation or shader writing. Sorry, we'll be making the we I've made some materials. I'll show you what I've made, but I am using Tuni Colors Pro Two, um, the which is a uh, a uh, shader that you can you can get on the Unity Asset Store. It's great, um, highly, highly recommend, but we will not be writing shaders. Uh, that is outside the scope of what we're doing. I do not write a lot of shaders. I've used Shader Graph, um, but we're not gonna be getting into that specifically. Okay, anyway, so with that prefix, uh, let's get started. So I have created a base scene here, um, and this base scene, you know what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna save this as a new scene. Um, and I'm going to strip out some of the extra stuff. Uh, so demo. Okay. Um, and I'm going to strip out all of the scripts that I've created. Remove component, right click, remove component. Um, and same with the camera, right click, remove component. Excellent. Uh, all right. So, uh, so now nothing should happen when I run it. Aside from I have a capsule collider and a rigid body, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, okay. Uh, so the first thing that uh, I'll bring up is we have, uh, I've created a, you know, base folder structure to make sure everything is, uh, you know, clean and organized. Um, so I'll just go through what I have here. Um, so what I always do is I have a, um, a folder for assets. Um, sometimes, like, usually I'll group these together, but in this case I didn't. Um, but I have a folder for characters, environment. Um, this is a, the, uh, the shader uh, that um, the, the Tuning Colors Pro um, folder. This gets generated when, I, when you import, so that's just there. One for props. This, would, this could also be grouped with assets. Um, and then I have one for scenes and scripts. Cool. Um, scenes right now has just two scenes in it, uh, the one that I've created um, and then the one that I just created now where I just stripped out the extra stuff so we can go through the uh, process. Um, scripts, we'll be creating three scripts. Um, I've already pre-created these. I will create new ones from scratch just to show you what the process is, but I had to make sure that I knew what I was doing first. Um, so the next thing is um, we have our uh, in our characters folder, we have um, you know subfolders for every character that we would potentially have. Obviously, we just have the one character, and inside that, I have an, a folder for animations, uh, materials, uh, meshes, and textures. You'll notice I have way too many materials, and that's because I was kind of experimenting. Uh, ignore the ones that end in one. So these two are, are were like test ones that I'm not using, um, and the. Did I not fix this? That's weird. It looks fine here, but not in the preview window, which is interesting. Okay. Hey, Cable, welcome in. Uh, yeah, no music because this is the workshop. Um, can't have music on workshop sessions. Uh, but thanks for the heads up. All right, so uh, then in the environments, um, I've just created a test folder. I would have a, a folder for every like uh, environment uh, area. So like if I had like a forest, a whatever, uh, a town or whatever, I'd create a folder for each of those. And then I'd go in here and I'd have um, subfolders for each of those, which would include like um, house or whatever, like all the different like um, things that are related to that area. Um, but you can, you can structure things however you want. I'm just going through a little bit of my specific pipeline and how I organize stuff. Um, so now that we have gone through that, um, let's look at what we, what we have here. So the first thing I did was I imported our, um, our skeletal mesh, which we exported last week. Um, so char Zoe, uh, and I brought it in here and, um, and then dropped her into the scene. Um, so you know what I'll do is I'll actually hide this and then we can just have absolutely nothing in the scene. Um, oh, by the way, this is just a cube with a checker pattern, which is what's in the environment. Um, so the environment just has this, this checker pattern and the material for the floor. Um, 
very very simple but it's just it's just so that we can see that we're moving around it's important to have some sort of pattern just the pure white was very very hard to see that you're actually moving right um okay um so we have our character mesh i brought her in once i brought her in i went into our material section and i went and i said extract materials it is grayed out now because i've already done it uh, but i hit extract materials then it'll ask you to save to a folder um and i just had it send it to the materials folder and it created all these materials for me um and then i uh, started working from there and again, these are using uh, the Tuni Colors Pro um, shaders. Um, I created my own custom shader. So if anyone gets Tuni Color Pro, essentially how it works is um, you go into the uh, where is it? Tools, Tuni Color Pro, and then you can do a um, shader generator. I use shader generator two, um, and it gives you something like this. Um, I'll show, quickly show you the one that I created. I'm not going to go too much into depth in this because, again, we're not. This isn't really what we're here to cover. Um, but uh, yeah, so this is our uh, the lighting is not. Yeah, lighting was. Uh, this is I just left all of the defaults. Um, nothing crazy here. Uh, so that's all normal. And then we have our. Uh, what else did I add? Uh, Oh, that's weird. Oh, it's because I didn't uh, load my shader. Um, that would help, wouldn't it? There we go. Like, I'm sure that I added a normal map. Um, okay, and lighting, I added specular, emission, rim, uh, yeah, I added rim lighting, but I don't think I actually ended up using it. Um, subsurface scattering I added didn't really work for me, so I didn't use it in this case. Um, we will be getting into subsurface scattering because for the uh, promo renders that we did that uh, we have in, in Marmoset, um, I did use subsurface a little bit, and I'll be uh, going over that uh, later. Um, okay, so we got our normal map and our stylization. I added a stylization option. It creates some, um, you know, some sharper lighting effects. Um, that's it. So essentially everything in green is the stuff that I added. So I, I added stuff in those areas. And then the shader properties, I did make some modifications. Specular color, um, I changed to a texture so that I can put a specular texture. Um, otherwise it's just a color, which wasn't working for me either. Um, emission, also added, switched this from color to texture uh, so that I could put an emissive texture in there. And normal map. Um, I added a height map uh, as well so that we can get that parallax effect on the eye. It doesn't quite work as well here as it does in, uh, in, in um, the Marmoset tool bag, but it does the trick. Um, so that's essentially what I did for the, uh, the Tuni Colors Pro setup. Um, and then once I've set that up, uh, again, I just dragged in my diffuse. I made it, the, the shadow color a little bit of a purpley tint. That's what I love about the shaders, you can tint the shadows. Um, I never really like pure black shadows when you're doing stylized uh, uh, projects uh, because it just becomes very, very muddy. Uh, it doesn't look very nice. Um, so I always like to mix it up a little bit. Right. Um, okay, and then we have, uh, you know, just the normal map, um, the specular map. Uh, I didn't end up putting in the emission map. <laughs> I see. Okay. Uh, that's fine. I don't even care. We'll get to that later. I'll fix it later. It's not important. Um, okay. Anyway, so textures, materials. Uh, what else do we got? We have our eye again. Same all stuff. All same. All the same stuff except I've added the uh, the normal map uh, height map, and I've added a little bit of an offset so that the eye it looks a little bit weird in the preview. <laughs> Um, but it like pushes the iris back a little bit, like we saw in Marmoset. I don't know why it looks like this in the preview window, but there you have it. Um, hair. Uh, there was an anisotropic option, which was nice. Um, and I added that. I just added in the map that... Oh, wrong map, but I added in a map that we created. Um, that also explains why the lighting was not looking so great. <laughs> uh, excellent. Okay, well, that's fine. Um... Let me, you know what I'm going to do, is I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to re 
for it to be appropriate texture. Uh, like so. Boom. Okay. Um, characters, so we, not textures, materials. And we'll just select the, the appropriate one there. There we go. <laughs> Fixed. Excellent. Um, okay, so let's get started with the actual implementation. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to throw a mesh in the scene. We're going to throw Zoe in there. There she is. Um, and we have to create a camera. You'll notice that it is not displaying anything anymore because I deleted our camera. Um, so what I do is I create um, a camera. Boom. Um, I'm just going to copy the positioning that I had from before because it was a good position. Uh, so copy component. All right, right click. Uh, paste component values. Boom. Excellent. Um, and what else are we going to do? So we have that. Uh, I think I made a little bit of a mistake in this previous one. Um, but that's okay. Yeah, I did. I shouldn't have had her rotated 180 degrees by default. That's a little bit silly. Just a little silly. Um, but we'll do it better this time. Uh, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to switch this to negative 10. Oh, hold on. Uh, did I really have it? Oh, yeah, that's right. No, 10 is fine. This is going to be switched to 0. Uh, and then we're going to switch the Z to negative. There we go. Perfect. Uh, if we look at our game, it'll look like this. Um, I don't really like the default sky thing. I actually prefer just a solid color, less distracting. Um, you can do whatever you like. I, I, I would put it like a proper skybox, like go in and get a nice skybox and all that stuff. We're not getting into that specific kind of stuff, but um, as far as environments go, you could really just do anything. I just, I just don't like that sky. It just doesn't look good. Uh, you know, the solid, solid color isn't that um, good either, but it adds, it changes your, like, the viewer's expectations, right? When you see, like, this kind of, like, almost sky line, it feels like, oh, yeah, it just kind of feels incomplete. Like, it feels bad, whereas this is clearly just a test room, right? Um, so it's just, yeah, I don't know. That's my preference. Um, cool. Let me just have a drink. Ah, better. Okay. Um, all right, so now that we have that, we're going to create uh, two groups. So we're going to create an empty uh, object. Make sure that this is zeroed out. I don't know why it doesn't just set it to zero when you create it. It creates it based off of your ca camera, which is weird, but that's just how it works. Um, and this is going to be GR uh, player like we have up top, right? And we're just going to drag our uh, character into that. Um, and then I think that's all I need there. Yeah. And then we're going to create a uh, group for the camera. Less important right now. Um, you know what? Actually, yeah, let's just drop the camera into the player group for now, and then we'll, we'll move on from there. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, so the next thing we got to do is we've got to create a script, right? So we're going to go into scripts, and we're going to say create a C-sharp script. Uh, and then this is going to be player controller... And I'm just going to put demo at the end because I already have this script that exists um, from earlier. I'm just going to create that like so. I'm just going to drag this over here. Um, so here is uh, the beginnings of our script. Okay. Uh, so the first things that we got to do is we got to make it so that we can move our player around. Um, Okay, so the first thing that we got to do, um, we're going to need to have an input, um, or sorry, well, we're going to have to detect input and then apply it to the character. Um, and for this, I end up using rigid bodies. The reason I like using rigid bodies is because it'll detect collisions for me, and collision detections is 
not fun. Um, but we will be overriding a lot of the rigid body components. Well, not a lot. We'll be overriding the velocity, right? So essentially all the um, physics will be custom, um, but uh, we use the rigid body because it does the collisions for us. So um, I'm just going to put rigid body in there. Uh, so essentially uh, what this is, a serialized field makes it available um, in the outliner. You could also just say like public rigid body. I don't like just making it public because then any script can access it. And some things I don't want to have accidentally accessed. So instead I make it private with the, the uh, prefix of serialized field so that it is still available in the outliner. Um, it is type rigid body and we're just gonna call it RB, okay? Um, and any inputs I like to put at the very top. So anything that comes from outside, um, I put there and keep it together. Uh, other than that, we're going to be needing our velocity. So we're going to do private vector um, three. Uh, I spelled that entirely wrong. Wow. Uh, vector three uh, v um, velocity. Um, I like to prefix with the v um, for vectors. Um, I'm kind of I've, lately. I've been sort of questioning whether I should do this, but what what this allows me to do is I can have multiple variables that are kind of related to each other, and say like one's a float. So say like um, private uh, float, right? Velocity. Say like I had another velocity variable that was a float, then I could prefix it with f, and then I have two variables that are essentially related to velocity, but one's the float, one's the vector. Um, it's nice to have a little prefix. Also, when, when you're like looking through your script, you can tell right away what it's supposed to be. Um, so that's that. And if anyone has any questions along the way, just let me know. Okay, so um, we have that so far. Um, and with all this stuff, obviously nothing is going to happen because we are not applying anything or doing anything. Um, I do need to set the um, the initial variable, so v velocity um, is equal to uh, v. Uh, sorry, uh, oh no, that's right. Vector three dot zero. So by default, the velocity is zero. Clearly, um, we don't want anything moving by default. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to have not only an update but a fixed update as well. So um, fixed update, how that works is it, um, it plays at a constant rate and it is completely unrelated to your frame rate. Update is uh, frame rate dependent. So every frame that is rendered, this will be called, right? But this will be called at a specific time interval, which you can change somewhere else in Unity. Um, you can't do that here. Uh, but it is constant, uh, constant uh, in, uh, interval. And what I end up doing here is uh, in update, I get all of my inputs. Uh, and in fixed update, I apply all of them. Um, so anything that is stored up, like velocity and things like that, gets applied to the character here. That way, any changes happen at a constant rate. And you don't have characters that are speeding up or slowing down at different rates because of the frame rate, right? So if you had acceleration on your model um, and you had a low frame rate and you put it in update, they would accelerate slower than if you had a higher frame rate because it only updates the acceleration, or sorry, this, it only speeds up every time a frame is rendered. So if fewer frames are rendered, obviously you're not gonna slow up, speed up quite as fast or stop as quickly uh, and you'll get different results. Now, the reason why I put inputs in update is because the inputs return values uh, on a rendered frame. So if I said on input, uh, key down A, for instance, um, you know, I should probably just write something, right? So uh, input uh, dot get uh, button down, uh, and then the button, let's say the button's called uh, jump, right? Uh, say we named it that. Um, so this, uh, if because this is on get button down, it triggers when you push the button down, um, but it doesn't trigger when the button is already down, right? Because that's a different one. So input uh, get button 
this is this calls as long as you're holding a button, right? Uh, but if this only calls the moment it is pressed, uh, but this returns values in um, in frame time, right? So if I try to do it here, there's a chance that it might miss it because this didn't happen to call at the same time that the frame was rendered because this and this do not call at the same time. Anyway, um, not super important, but uh, that's uh, that's what it is. It's your V blank. Hey, Tom, I do not know what that means. Uh, OK, so with that said, um, what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, start moving our player around. Uh, and to do that, um, we're going to say, so this is going to be very, um, very basic first. So we're going to do v velocity um, is equal to, uh, uh, sorry, v velocity uh, is equal to vector 3.0. In this case, we're re resetting it every frame. Um, and then, uh, and then what we're going to do is v velocity uh, dot uh, x is equal to uh, input dot get axis. So this is getting access. Uh, so get axis is get input from a control stick um, or a value that has a a, a positive and negative input. Um, and a range between them. Uh, so this is going to be uh, horizontal, which is our horizontal axis on the control stick. However, there is a keyboard input that is associated to it as well, and I'll show you that in a minute. No, nope, not like that, Unity. Thank you. Um, okay. Horizontal. Um, excellent. And uh, Z. All right. Uh, it's going to be vertical, which is our uh, forward movement, right? Uh, so the the uh, the immediate issue here is it's this is going to give us a value between negative one and one, not going to be enough to move our player forward. So what we have to do is uh, add a speed variable, right? So we're going to have to actually go in here. We're going to say uh, private uh, float. Uh, f max speed okay um we're going to say f max speed uh do, 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 do. it's going to be eight sorry i'm just looking at the values that i have listed out on the side that's so if i stop for a moment <laughs> it's because i'm referring to, to the script i wrote before because like i'm not going to like experiment with values here i'm using values that i've already created um, so what we do then, and then we're going to just multiply this by our max speed of 8, okay? Um, and then, now that we're setting our velocity based off of our input, so we're getting our input every frame, we're going to apply it. So we go to our rigid body, rigid body dot velocity is equal to the velocity. All right. Um, and that's that. Okay. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to mention as well. Uh, so the cube I brought in, um, I didn't place it for you guys in here. So I just wanted to show you what I did, right? It's just a regular cube, dropped it in, made it real big in the uh, X and Z, um, flattened it out a little bit because it didn't need to be a giant cube, and then made sure that the ground um, was zero. So basically because this is a 0 0.2 thick, um, if I reduce it to negative one and the pivot is in the center of the cube, uh, the, the ground is on the ground plane, right? So if I look at here, uh, this is the grid and this is the ground plane. So that way, if I have the player at zero, I know that they're snapped to the ground. Uh, just cleaner uh, for, for testing here. Anyway, um, so we have our player controller demo, which I'm going to drop onto the player, like so. Uh, so a couple more things we're going to have to create now is we're going to have to create a rigid body and a capsule collider. All right, so we're going to add a component. Um, then we're gonna start with a capsule collider because it was there and ready for us. Uh, so usually when I create a capsule collider on a player, you know, I don't want to make it too big. Um, you want to keep it relatively small, but not too small either. So maybe like 0.3. Uh, 0.3 might be a bit small, maybe 0.4. 0.4 is 
Okay. Um, her height, uh, so the height of this, again, I would probably want it around her head. Doesn't matter all that much, um, because we're not hitting any ceilings. If we had jumping, maybe we'd care a little bit more. Uh, so 1.8, and then we're just going to set this to 0.9. Um, so the reason this is 0.9 is because it's half of the height, um, and that just makes sure that the capsule is on the ground, which is uh, nice and uh, dandy. Right? Then we're going to add our rigid body, right? So rigid body. Uh, click that. And what we want to do is we want to not use gravity because uh, we're going to be uh, creating our own gravity. Uh, why do you use a capsule collider instead of a mesh collider? Ooh, because a mesh collider on an animating object, I don't even think you can do that. <laughs> the mesh collider um, will probably just take the default state of a mesh. I've never actually tried to use it on a skeletal mesh, um, but that would mean it would be T-pose. And if we use the mesh collider, um, the, her arms would be included, uh, and they'd just be sticking out the side, and you'd hit walls, and it'd be very, very uncomfortable. Um, another reason is um, the capsule collider is nice because it has a rounded bottom, uh, requires, it causes less friction. Um, it's much more performant. Mesh render, mesh colliders are not as performant either, um, and they could cause a lot of unexpected results. Uh, so if you're doing like a um, a uh, a ray cast and you're like hitting the surface um you you're gonna be um it, it doesn't necessarily always provide you with the results that you want i think it's a bit better now but it used to be that when you did a ray cast it could not return you the surface normal or something like that unless the capsule collider was no it couldn't return the contact point i think it's something like that um there's a there's something that it just couldn't do quite right it can do it now but Again, that's, that's not the, the big reason. The big reason is just because um, you want to, uh, an approximated collider is just uh, cleaner than having a, um, you know, a complex mesh. Um, also, like, I wouldn't really want her tail included in the collider um, because that's just going to, like, you're going to end up hitting stuff and getting stuck on stuff um, that you don't really want to get stuck on. Uh, so that's why like, I, I definitely would not use a mesh collider on a player character. Okay, uh, but thank you for asking. That's a uh, good, uh, good to ask questions. Um, so another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I'm going to freeze the rotation. Um, otherwise, the character will fall over, which is quite funny. I actually was messing around with this when I was prepping uh, last night or the night before. No, it was the night before. Um, and I was just running, and then she started like running on the ground as she was like rolling like a barrel. <laughs> it was hilarious. Um, I had a good chuckle. Anyway. Um, that, that's what would happen. Uh, so we want to make sure that we only have rotation in... Actually, we don't even need rotation at all, um, because I, I actually rotate a sub-object, um, again, for cleanliness uh, and organization. Uh, and then we do not freeze position because we need to be able to move around. Excellent. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to talk about inputs. Um, before we get anywhere. I just want to make sure that I explain that. Um, so you have things that are set up uh, by default um, by the system, except for the second mouse X and mouse Y. I created those and I'm going to get into that in a second. Um, but this is mouse X, mouse Y. So we, by default, we have the horizontal and vertical that I was using. Um, and what it has set up in it is it's taking the left and right arrow keys or A and D. So A, W, S, D um, and the left and right arrow keys both work. And you'll notice that we have two of them. Um, so you can have a whole bunch of these that have the same name, but just get different inputs. Um, so we have horizontal. Um, I'm actually not sure what would happen if you treated one as a, as a stick and one as a, uh, as a button, and whether that would cause conflicts. I never tried that. Probably would cause some sort of problem. But the, basically, the ones that are the same are always, uh, so this is always considered an axis, right? Um, which we were getting into before. Uh, so the, it's an axis because it has a positive and negative uh, button, which means that it can be either one or negative one uh, as a return value. Uh, the stick has a little bit more nuance because you have a bit of a range. So it can be anywhere between uh, one and negative one and not exclusively one or negative one, right? Um, so this is the default settings. And joystick axis x-axis means that it is the left stick, uh, left and right is the x-axis, and then up and down would be the y-axis, which is the vertical. Um, so great. 
So we have our left stick input slash keyboard input of WASD and arrow keys. Um, so if I play this, it should move. Um, but, oh wait, no, it won't because I didn't plug in the rigid body. You can see I got an error right off the bat. Um, and that's because in here, um, we have to put in our rigid body like so. Oh, I'm going to save that. Also, hey, Becca, I don't think I said hi. Um, if I didn't, I'm sorry. I hope you're doing well. It's, it's harder to keep track of chat when I'm uh, trying to actively explain something. There we go. Okay, so we're moving. Great. Um, so that is perfect. Pretty dandy, right? Pretty cool. Oh, yeah, I just arrived a few minutes ago? Yeah, yeah, no worries, no worries. Excellent. Um, okay, so we're moving now. We're moving and grooving. Uh, so before we go any further, one thing I like to do is I like to break out the, um, the movement into a different function. You don't have to, but I feel like it just makes, if I can break up different actions within this into different functions, it just makes this easier to parse because you don't have a huge amount of text all grouped together. Essentially you have like little groupings inside that say like, oh, this does this. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a function. Um, so we're going to do void um, uh, vector. It's got to return a vector two or vector three. Sorry, vector three, three. Um, and this is going to be a. Oh wait, <laughs> I just made it a void vector three. <laughs> it can't be void and a vector. Idiot. Uh, public vector three. Um, Equate movement force. Ah, can't spell. Okay. All right. Excellent. Um, and the input it is going to receive is our uh, our current velocity. Uh, is that right? Hold on. No, it doesn't need that. Uh. Oh, right, my bad. Um, that's not really required either. Uh, what is required is, uh, well, nothing right now. Nothing's required right now. I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to just return. Uh, we're going to get a uh, vector uh, 3, and this is going to be our uh, v. Uh, i got to call it something other than vvel. Um, I'm just going to call it deep force, right? Uh, I don't know if V force is a, is a good option though. Is a good, this is what I, V force is what I used before, but I don't think it's a good descriptor of what this is. Um, I'm going to say new velocity, new velocity. All right. And this is going to be equal to uh, vector three dot zero. Um, which is all this stuff, right? So basically this, uh, this stuff is going to be in here. Okay. Now we're going to say return uh, new velocity. Okay. And then this is going to be vvel is equal to uh, equate movement force. Boom. Ah, why do you do this? Why are you this way? There we go. Excellent. Oops. Okay, so now that we have that, that's all good to go. This will work exactly the same way. Let's just test it out real quick, make sure that everything is fine. Um, but again, yeah, I'm just breaking that out into a function because it is uh, cleaner to read. Uh, Excellent. So we're there, moving around. Excellent. Wonderful. Uh, okay. Mm. What do we have next? So we have our camera. We're not getting into the camera just yet. Uh, we got our velocity, 
I think the next thing that we have to do is work based off of the, I guess maybe we should start moving the, oh. Let's introduce player rotation next, okay? So, all right, so we're going to rotate the player and that's gonna happen in fixed update because it just uses our regular uh, input. Um, I'm gonna, again, for, uh, for grouping and cloning this, I'm gonna group this into a separate function. Okay, so, um, this one is a void, it doesn't return anything. Uh, void uh, rotate avatar. Um, for, for the sake of uh, wording, I, the avatar is referring to the actual player mesh, which I put in a subfolder underneath the main group. Uh, so rotate avatar, right? And um, I only want this to happen if, uh, if there's input. Uh, so if uh, uh, v vel dot magnitude is greater than zero, um, I could probably make it so that if it's only if there's keyboard input or uh, uh, controller input. Um, but uh, essentially, this is just so that the, the character doesn't rotate when when nothing is happening, right? And the rotation is based off of the velocity. Uh, and then we're going to say rotate avatar. And I actually don't even need these uh, other brackets because it's only a one-liner. So if this happens, then rotate avatar. Uh, you can put the curly braces on both sides or not. It's the same thing, but I feel like this just this looks cleaner than to me than having a whole bunch of extra lines. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, so what I end up doing is I get our velocity. So I want to uh, have an input of velocity. So this is going to be vector three uh, v vel. If it's an input, I usually suffix it with an i, uh, so that I, I know that I can differentiate it. Uh, and I'm just going to put the velocity in here. V vel. Okay. Um, whoops. And then here I'm going to make sure that v vel i. Um, dot y is equal to zero. So I don't want to account for any vertical speed to rotate the character because otherwise we'll be rotating up and I only want to rotate in one axis. Uh, so that's, uh, that's important. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to create a rotation target. So we're going to do quaternion because we're working with quaternions now. Yay, fun quaternions. Uh, I'm just going to have a prefix of q because it's a quaternion. Uh, rotation goal. Okay. This is going to be equal to quaternion dot look rotation. Um, and then this is going to be v vel i. Uh, and then new, or actually, I could probably just do a vector 3 dot up. Vector 3 dot up. Oops. Okay. There's just going to be uh, a, a vector with uh, 1 in the y value and 0 in the other values. You can see the, uh, the preview of what that what a vector up vector dot up is um, and then i put in the speed which is going to be time dot delta time um, so this is important too because this is going to change the amount that it rotates every frame based off of uh, how much time has passed in between this frame and the last so this way even though it's happening actually i guess this wouldn't matter because it's in the fixed update but if it was in the update it wouldn't matter because it is still it's still accounting for time um, and then we're going to do a times, and I'm going to introduce a new variable here, f uh, rotation speed. We're going to have to create it, so it's going to be uh, giving me an error saying it can't do that because that variable does not exist. Um, so we're going to create another variable. We're going to call it private float f rotation speed. Oh, done. And we're going to give that a value, uh, f uh, rotation speed. Oops, no, not like this. Uh, rot speed. Um, let me just check what value I gave it before. I gave it a value of 20, so we're going to stick with that. Um, well, Beanie, hey, um, I have no idea what you're doing. <laughs> I'm showing how to create a basic character movement controller um, in Unity. 
So a quick recap of what we did is um, uh, essentially in the update, I get our uh, inputs. So this is our inputs from our controller. Um, we get the horizontal and vertical axis and store them into a vector three and multiply those by the, uh, the speed that we want the character to move at um, and put that into our velocity value and then store that velocity into our rigid body. Um, and then uh, with that value, we'll move the player around. And now we're adding player rotation. Um, so if the velocity is higher than zero, the player is moving and we can change the rotation. Um, smart boy hours? I don't know, it's more like me clumping around in, in, in the dark hours. <laughs> Trying to make things work and not look like a fool. But we'll get there. Um, okay, so where was I? Uh, I do not know why this is giving me an error. Look rotation takes three arguments. What did I miss? Um, hold on. Oh, none of them take three arguments. Oh! Wait. I made a mistake here. This is... First you have to get the, the, the target and then we rotate afterwards. <laughs> Okay, sorry. So that's our target rotation. And now we have to actually apply the rotation. Um, so actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another input. Hold on, I'm going to store this over here so that I don't have to retype it. Um, so we need another input, so I'm just going to copy this. Um, this is going to be a private game object. Uh, Geo uh, player avatar. So, um, so this is going to be this game object here. We're going to plug that into this. And um, I don't know, can you see my mouse, actually? Yeah, you should be able to see my mouse, yeah, yeah. Um, so Char Zoe is the actual character mesh, and that's going to go in here, and that's what we're going to be rotating. Um, so now I can just copy this again, because I have it. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, geo uh, p avatar. Um, and then we're going to say is uh, the transform dot rotation because we're going to be changing the rotation value, is equal to quaternion dot slurp. So because we're going to be slurping between um, the, uh, the uh, current rotation and the new rotation based off of how much time has passed since the last time this was called. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take that, and we're going to take the initial rotation, because we're, we're slurping from the original rotation, uh, to the new rotation, which is going to be our Q target rotation. Uh, rotation goal, my, ah, come on. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Um, and then we're going to, now we're going to put in our, our time that we had before. So this is going to happen based off of that time. And why are you error, erroring? Why, why aren't you a happy lad? Oh, because I'm not getting the rotation. All right. <laughs> ah, I am a fool, everyone. I am a fool. But with that said, this will rotate our player. And it should only rotate um, during our uh, uh, when input is, uh, is being applied. So when there's input, then we rotate. Wonderful. Okay. Everyone following along so far? Okay. It would help if I, uh, you know, gave it the, the mesh to rotate. That would, that would help. I gotta put it in there. I always forget to drop in the parameters. It's a bad habit. There she goes, she rotates now. Isn't that nice? Pretty dandy. Pretty dandy indeed. All right. So, the next thing that we gotta do. Uh, so much dominance being asserted here. <laughs> T-pose movement, yeah, yeah. If you're a fool, I'm a buffoon, uh, my good sir. I'm so lost, but just fine. <laughs> Well, it's, it's a little bit tough when you haven't really touched code before. 
But I'm trying to keep this as, as um, straightforward as possible. I'm not going into any of like the nitty gritty, right? Uh, so what I want, like, um, again, like I'm not going to get into jumping or ground detection or anything like that because that's a little bit higher level. I'm just getting a, into basic movement here. All right. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to make it so that we can uh, rotate our camera around. I think that is the next thing that's going to be important. Okay. So the next thing is uh, we're going to create a camera group um, and a gram a gramra <laughs> a gramra script. Uh, so we're going to create an empty object. You only got to zero all this stuff out. I, if I had right clicked on player and created it, it would have created inside the player and it would have been zeroed out, which would have been smarter. But I didn't do that, so I got to zero this out. Um, this is going to be gr camera. Um, all right, and then we're going to put our camera into our camera group, and then we're going to put the camera group into the player group. Um, so that the camera follows along and we're going to create another group within this camera uh, and this is going to be um, a GR uh, look vertical um, so because of um, you know Euler rotations um, get, they can be a little bit unpredictable here so I actually I really prefer to separate my rotations. So this is only going to take the rotation around the player. And this is only going to take the vertical rotation up and down. Um, and that way I don't get like some weird uh, Dutch tilt camera, which can happen sometimes. Uh, so that's why I separated it that way. And we're going to create a script. And we're going to say create C sharp script. And, um, and this is going to be player camera again i'm going to suffix it with demo because i already have a player camera script that i had created earlier which is right here right i'm going to drag this onto our player camera uh there uh, on the group sorry not the camera itself but the group the the most the highest the most highest camera group yes not the player group the most highest camera group uh, all right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to open up our script and we're going to drag it over into our screen here. Excellent. And uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, hopefully, this should be a little bit more uh, straightforward. So we have to have two inputs here. So we're going to do a serialized field, um, and this is going to be a private game object. Um, I'm still in, oh my god, there we go, uh, game object geo uh, rotation container, uh, rotation container y, because this is going to be the rotation along the y axis, and then I'm going to create one more, which is the one that goes around the x axis, uh, which is those two groups that we were talking about, excellent. Um, and then another thing that we got to do is we're going to have some variables for y rotation and for x rotation. Um, but we're going to start with just the y rotation because the x rotation will come later. Um, so f rotation, or sorry, float f rotation speed. Ah! <laughs> you can tell I don't type or write much. Uh, oops. All right. Then we're going to set our f rotation speed. So f rotation speed is. Oh, come on. There we go. Uh, is equal to 200. Um, and also, I'm going to actually make this a uh, y, because this is just for the y axis. The x axis uh, could have a, a different speed uh, and will have a different speed. Um, and again, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to get an input um, from the uh, from the player. So uh, that's why it's happening in the. Uh... Oh wait, <laughs> in my example. I did this in the fixed update, um, which is foolish. <laughs> that's okay. Um... Is it though? Is it all that foolish? You know what, actually it doesn't matter. Um, and I'll explain why. Um, so this is gonna be a fixed update. 
Um, because they're not actually getting a button detection, and we're getting a stick that doesn't change from frame to frame, we can get our inputs here, and I'm just going to do it that way. I hope that makes sense. Uh, it's always good to do labels. I, I highly, highly recommend writing uh, tags to remind yourself of what things do. You might even want to have more than what I'm doing if you're following along and you're trying to like remember what each thing does, right? Um, so what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to create an area, a, a variable for input. Um, and the default is going to be zero. So we're going to set it to zero at the start. Whoa. Oh man, I missed a raid. I am so sorry. <laughs> Agua, welcome in. Um, how are you doing, guys? Welcome in. Thanks for the raid. I have the wrong stream overlay, so it didn't show the notification. I am very sorry. Um, I'm so sorry, guys. How is your stream? Welcome in. We're just uh, going over some uh, game implementation stuff. We're doing a workshop today, um, and uh, and uh, we're, we're we're chipping through it. How am I? I'm doing good. We're uh, we're getting things done. I'm getting things done. Let me just reduce the size of this box so I can see chat a little better and be less of a fool. Okay, so we're gonna get a new input. F input. Uh, what were you guys working on, by the way, Agua? is equal to input uh, dot get axis. Uh, and this is gonna be mouse X. All right, so we're gonna, the mouse is gonna be ca controlling the camera. Uh, so mouse X uh, times, oops, times F rotation speed, Y, uh, times time dot delta time. Uh, I don't really need this per se here because we are in the fixed update, but I do it anyway because it's good practice. Also, this allows me to control time a little bit better. Um, okay, uh, time dot delta time. Uh, what did I do wrong here? Uh, oh, I don't need that end bracket. That's what I did wrong. I do not need this. And then. Um, I recently tried the input manager from Unity. It's good. Uh, makes player movement so easy. I was uh, doing pixel art. Nice. Uh, but did not get the finish. That's all right. Did you want to share what you were working on? I can't show it on stream because we're doing the workshop right now. I'll share it after we're done the workshop stuff, but I would love to see it um, if you want to share it. Hey, Waffle. Extra closing. Also, hi. Hello. Um... Oh, you were saying I had an extra closing bracket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I got it. I figured it out. Uh, all right, and then we're going to take our rotation container y uh, dot transform dot uh, rotate. Um, so this is going to have a constant rotation. If you wanted to, um, you could take this a little bit further and use easing like we did with the player's rotation and use it on the camera as well so that the camera kind of like eases in and out. It's up to you. I like to, I, I, I want to have like a faster snappy camera though, so I'm just going to leave it like that. Um, and then we're going to have zero comma um, F input. And then we're going to have uh, zero. So this is only happening in the Y axis. Again, isolating to one axis. And now we should be able to rotate the camera in the Y axis. Um, I can share what I did yesterday though. Okay. Oh, this is, this is really nice. Some, some Lugias and a shiny Lugia. Nice. Thanks for sharing. Uh-oh. Did, uh, oh no. Uh, <laughs> uh-oh. My stream lab seems to have frozen. Am I still live? 
Whoa. Yeah, I'm still live. Streamlabs is frozen. Uh, I just opened Twitch. <laughs> uh, oh no. Oh, oh, it came back. Oh, thank the gods. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> Sorry about that little pause there. That was very concerning. Um, I thought I had lost everything. Okay. Anyway, back to this. How are you doing, Sodar? All right. So we're going to put our camera, our new, uh, we put our camera rotation script on there. We're going to put our container there. So now the camera should rotate uh, and it'll rotate with the mouse. Two things I want to bring up here. Uh, because now we've introduced a new issue is that now that we're facing from the side, front and back are now left and right, right? Oh no, that's not good. You can't be having that. That's bad. You want to make sure that the movement of the player is uh, reflected uh, by the rotation of the camera. So we're going to have to do that next. Airplane noises. Oh, is there airplane noise over that side? Oh. That's just how it goes. Um, but before that, I want to bring up one more thing with the input manager. So remember how I said I created two extra ones? The second mouse X and Y. Um, because we have a uh, horizontal and vertical for the keyboard and for the controller, um, for the left stick, we're fine. But for the right stick, for the camera looking, there isn't one. Um, so what I did is I created two extra ones. So all I did is I right clicked on horizontal, duplicated it, um, and named it mouse X, and then right clicked on the vertical, duplicated it, and called it mouse Y. Um, in mouse X, I changed the joystick axis to fourth. This is the uh, left and right on the right stick of a controller. Uh, this, is cons this is for general game pads um, and Xbox controllers. You might have to look up something else for a PlayStation controller, because uh, I know the PlayStation controller works differently. Um, but then fifth, fifth axis was for the, uh, y's, uh, the uh, Y axis, or the up and down. So I created those, that way I could use the controller or the keyboard in order to control the camera. I mean, her teeth hosing, oh. <laughs> okay, excellent. Um, so now what we have to do is we have to get our player. Um, we're gonna wanna be able to have an input of our uh, camera. So we're going to do here, I'm just going to duplicate this, and this is going to be Geo Player Cam. Okay. Um, and now what we have to do is we have to offset our movement input based off of the, um, based off of the, the, the look angle of the camera, okay? So in order to get this, what I end up doing is I will get the forward, uh, hold on, let me remember. Okay, yeah, that's right. So I need the forward and uh, left right axis. So forward and right axis of the camera in order to reorient um, the uh, the uh, player rotation. All right. So this is going to be uh, orient um, movement to camera. Okay. So the first thing we got to do is we're going to create a vector three. Uh, v, uh, cam right. This is going to be the uh, camera right uh, position. Or right axis, sorry. So this is going to be our equal to geo player camera uh, dot transform dot right. Okay. Um, okay, and then I'm just going to duplicate this. This is going to be forward, and this is going to be forward. All right. Um, now, uh, before using this to offset the the uh, the movement, I have to do two things. One, I have to normalize these vectors. They should be normalized by default, but just in case, I'll normalize them um, to be uh, a range of uh, zero to one. Um, so normalizing what it'll end up doing is it'll take whatever axes are applied and make sure that the vector length is one, uh, no matter what uh, direction we're getting. Um, but again, they should be by default, but just for safety, I like to normalize them. 
So v camera uh, forward dot normalize. The camera dot right dot normalize. Uh, the order of these doesn't really matter all that much. I do want to put them the other way though, because I have um, I just I like I like to have order. <laughs> so I want them to be the same, but they, it really doesn't matter if they're the same. Um, and then I want to make sure that the y axis. Oh, sorry. Before normalizing it, actually, this makes normalizing it valid because I'm going to be they're not going to be normalized after I do this. Um, I want to make sure that their y-axis is set to zero. Um, forward dot y is equal to zero. Um, and then the camera dot right dot y is equal to zero. Now the reason why I'm converting the y-axis to zero is because in the scene here, the camera is on an angle. Um, so it's looking down at the player. Um, and uh, that means that if I get the axis between the, pl the axis of the camera to change the orientation of the inputs, um, if you push forward, it's going to be pushing you into the ground um, instead of pushing you forward because it's taking the axis of the camera and in including the Y um, to determine which direction the player will move in. So I have to make sure that I'm not um, in including the Y axis. To note, non-normalized direction vectors are why some older games let you run faster than you should diagonally. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, to, to visualize that, um, actually, let me visualize that. So if you had like a speed value, right, and then uh, if you had a speed value, um, and then the player could put in a left or right, that would mean that they could work, run um, like a certain speed this direction and a certain speed this direction. Um, but if you add both of those together, you get a vector that's twice as long because you're, you're getting the double speed, right? Well, I don't think twice is quite the right value, but it's something like that. It would be these vectors would basically compile and make you run faster in the diagonal. Probably not a good explanation, but there you go. Uh, which we also we actually do have that problem right now because uh, we're, we'll get there eventually, I think. I don't remember if I actually fixed that. Maybe we won't. Uh, but we do have that problem right now because we get uh, the input from these two axes and don't normalize it. Um, so what I should actually be doing is uh, is this: um, the new val dot normalize. Right, and then, uh, then we can just multiply it by uh, the speed. So v new velocity uh, times equals f max speed. Oops. Okay. Uh, and then we just remove these. Uh, it's Pythagorean, but close enough to double. Yeah, it's like 1.8 something or something like that. Anyway, I don't remember. It's been too long. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so now that we have our offset vectors, uh, that was a bit of a tangent. I hope people are still on the same page. I'm sorry about that. So we have our new orientation based on these two cameras. Um, and then we have to apply the offset um, to our, our main velocity that we're creating. So in order to do that, we do the new velocity is equal to um, the new vel dot z uh, times ca the camera forward. Um, and then we do our uh, plus the uh, nouvelle dot x times right. All right. And that should give us our new velocity.
Okay. And now, when the camera rotates, the uh, player should uh, move in the direction of the camera. So if I go here and push, uh oh. <laughs> I didn't. Uh, I did that thing again, you know, the thing where I don't actually put the input in? That thing? The thing that I said I keep doing is a bad habit and I should stop doing? That thing, yeah. I'll do it again. God damn it. All right. There we go. So now if I rotate the camera, I'm only pushing forward right now and rotating the camera. She is jittering a little bit, which I don't like, but that's okay. You could smooth things out a little bit with easing. Remember, like, I had the rotation values. Um, you could probably, if I had, like, made it so that she doesn't rotate quite so, so much or so quickly, it wouldn't be as jarring. Or if I had it easing to the camera and stuff like that. I think what's happening is because she's rotating and the camera's rotating, it just feels a little bit jittery. Basically, ease the character angle, but not the camera. Yeah, right now the camera is not easing, but the player is easing. Um, and it just looks like it's jittering if you see both of them moving at the same time, right? Because relative to the player and the camera, she's moving, like, because I'm moving only the camera around, she's going to look a little bit jittery because, um, because she's moving at a different rate than the camera, right? Yeah. So that's why it feels a little jittery. If I had eased both, it wouldn't be so bad. For our, for our needs here, it's not such a big deal. Like, I don't, I mean, it's not the end of the world. But it's something to be aware of. If you want to, like, remove that jitter, that's what you'd have to do. Asserting dominance. That's right, Nas. You gotta. You gotta assert dominance. Um, okay, so that's great. We have our movement relative to our camera. Everything is going swimmingly. Um, and we get to carry on. So on to the next step. So the next step is I want to add, um, that'd be a good next step. I guess we could show acceleration next. Ah, all right, so next step will be acceleration. Um, so. What I'm going to do is instead of having us input directly into the velocity, as we input into a target velocity, um, and the reason for inputting into a target velocity is so that we can uh, ease from our main position into our new position. Just give me one second. Just want to make sure that I'm on the right track here. Okay. Okay, so what I end up doing here is I'm going to ease to our target velocity as opposed to just jumping to our target velocity. That's what we're going to be doing. So private float um, f uh, player ease or movement ease, I guess. And then our movement ease will be a value of five. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to say, um, blah, 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 blah. Uh, oh yeah, and we also have to create a target velocity. Okay. Excellent. And, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. F target velocity and so instead of putting it into velocity we put into our target.
Okay. And then what we do is we go into our uh, fix update and we say v vel is equal to uh, vector three dot lerp. Oops. All right. And we're lerping from our current velocity uh, to our new velocity. So v vel target. And then we're going to do that at a, a, our uh, a rate dot delta time uh, times uh, f movement ease. This way we don't like jut into a new speed, we kind of ease between it. Um, so there's a little bit of easing now. Okay. Yeah. That should work fine. So you might not want this. If you're doing something that's like more precise platformer, you might not want this because uh, you, you might want to have like, oh, I stop immediately. This gives us a little bit of acceleration and deacceleration. It's very, very minor, but it's there. And you can change how, how fast or slow that would be. Um, so say like I set this to like a value of one. Should, uh, it should ease a little differently. That's very not noticeable, <laughs> um, but yeah. There we go. So now there's a little bit of an ease in and out. Yeah, so like the, the, the more ease you have, the clunkier your movement will feel, right? Which may or may not be going with, uh, may or may not be what you want. Like maybe you want to have very accurate movements, or maybe you want to have it so that like the character has a little bit of a, a, a slow turn around. All right, so I think that's good. Um, the next thing to do will be. Uh, the next thing to do, I think, will be to add uh, animations. Animations are fun, right? I probably should have done that at the beginning because that would have felt probably more fun. But hey, you know what? Leave. Why not leave the fun for the end, right? Um, so we're going to create a C# -sharp script, and we're going to do player animator um, demo. I like to handle my animations in a separate script. You know, it's just easier to uh, parse. Um, the player animator demo. All right. And the player animator doesn't need a lot. It doesn't. Uh, all it needs is our uh, player controller. So uh, player, uh, sorry, serialize field. Come on. Uh, to private um, player controller. Uh, in this case, we're doing demo because we created the second script. I'm just going to call it PC. Um, and then we're going to do create another thing. This is going to be our player animator, or just animator, <laughs> animator. Uh, and I'm just going to call this anim. Excellent. And then uh, in our player controller script, we're going to, have to create another script, which is going to be um, public. Um, actually, this, 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 this needs to be private. These both need to be private. Uh, public void, uh, no, not void, uh, vector three dot get, get, uh, 
no, not dog. Get velocity. All right. And this is going to return a velocity value, so uh, vector three uh, v vel output, um, and then we're going to say v vel output is equal to uh, rigid body dot velocity. So it's whatever ve velocity we have insert into the uh, rigid body. Um, does not need the brackets. I don't know why I did that, but I did. And v vel uh, velocity dot y is equal to zero. And the reason I'm doing this is because if we have any fall speed, um, it's not going to make the player run, right? Um, if they're falling. So v vel oops, return uh, v vel output. So, and then we're going to go back into here, and we're going to say our anim dot set float, uh, and we're going to call the float velocity. Uh, is, and we're going to set it to pc.getvelocity. I don't know why it's not showing up. Can I not? Hold on. What? That's weird. Oh, whoops. Not player camera, player controller. There we go. What? Hey now. What are you doing? Get velocity. What am I doing wrong here? Oh, right. Uh, flip. Uh, dot magnetic. There we go. All fixed. All right. So now we're gonna have to create our animation controller. Uh. Uh. Sorry. Yeah. 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 So we're gonna go under characters as only animations. So these are the animations again we exported last time. Um. So a couple things I want to bring up now that we're talking about animations. So. When I imported uh, our Skell Mesh, um, I talked about materials, but I did not talk about the rig section. Um, so I'm using generic in this case. We could probably use the humanoid, um, the humanoid uh, rigs or the humanoid system, um, but I'm just going to stick with generic for simplicity's sake. If we did humanoid, then we'd have to go through and we'd have to assign all the bones and stuff. Which I guess is something worth showing, but I don't want to overcomplicate it. Um, but anyway, I created a generic uh, from this avatar. Another thing to consider about generic is if you have a stretchy rig um, where joints are moving around, um, not going to work with humanoid. Humanoid is very specific to just um, just rotation values, um, and it only uses specific joints. So that if I was trying to retarget to another character. Um, it wouldn't put in any of the extra transforms. It would just have the main rotation values. Um, why trim up the velocity vector in the player controller and not the endpoint that uses it? I'm not sure uh, what you mean by that, Waffle. Uh, do you mean... Do you mean like why I don't cap the velocity? I can't go above our max speed ever because I am just going to that target. I'm not I can't like I'm not additively adding to velocity. I'm just going to a target velocity. Um and the target velocity is a percentage of eight. Is that what you mean? 
Um, but I'll carry on with this until then. Oh, typically, you'd want to do the specific stuff for a target class in the class itself. If uh, some other class wants to get velocity on the player, they're going to get the flattened magnitude. Or are you just saying like you, you don't like the fact that I'm only returning the, fl the float value? And you're saying like I should just get the magnitude in the animator? Um, the reason I'm doing that is because like this is all, I know this is all that that function is going to need to give me. That's the player controller is doing camera controller's math. No, it's not. It's getting the rotation from the camera, or you mean, or do you mean like I should make a function in the camera to give me this information? Um, what it's doing is I'm just getting the camera position and offsetting the the player movement by whatever the camera is, or like from whatever the camera is, I'm just offsetting. I'm not actually changing anything that from the camera. I'm just getting values from the camera. But I suppose yes, I could put that in the camera function if I wanted to. And have that as a as a return value. I'm saying it's good practice for non-spaghetti code. Yeah, but I'm not a good programmer. <laughs> I'm not going to pretend I'm a good programmer. Um, I didn't. Like, I didn't even think of doing that. Um, but I could. Yeah, it would. Like to me, it makes no difference. Um, to me, it makes no difference. Uh, I could put it in there if I wanted to and get velocity. Yeah. Um, no. Like if I wanted to, like you said, I could say like uh, void uh, get camera direction or whatever. And then actually it wouldn't be a void, it would be a public um, Uh, yeah, so you're saying like just move all this stuff here essentially. Uh, and this would be, uh, but then I had to like get, what do you mean waffle? Now you're making it more confusing. All right, you know what, forget this. Anyone that does this, don't worry about it. I'm not going to talk about this anymore because I've made, made this super confusing. And sorry. Let me just get back to animation. Um, anyway. Um, so now that I've created a rig, um, in these, I want to make sure that they are the same rig as the base. Um, so what I have done here is I've done generic, but instead of saying create uh, from this model, I do create from another avatar. And I selected uh, the original avatar that we had created on the scale mesh here. Um, and then uh, for a run, same thing. Right. Uh, we didn't export the run, or sorry, we didn't export the idle on stream last time, but it's the exact same process as the run. And I kind of don't want to show you that because I want to make sure that you can figure it out. Um, it's the same process for exporting both of these. Um, the only thing that we have to do in engine now that I want to be uh, specific about, um, at, aside from the rig, is in the animation section. Um, so I, there's an animation compression, um, and I like to turn this off. I know it's less performant, um, but I hate the, the compression because what, en what ends up happening is the feet just slide all over the place. Um, it's not as noticeable for a run, but for an idle, the feet get very, very slidey and it just irritates me to no end. Um, so if we look at this here, the feet are planted, right? Nice. If I turn this on and then try it again, uh, you know what? It's not looking bad here. I guess because there's a lot of movement, but um, a lot of the times what will end up happening is the feet will start sliding because of the uh, approximated curves. I don't know why I'm not seeing it specifically. 
Was it optimal? I don't know. Anyway, calling me a liar. But anyway, I turn it off for that reason because a lot of the time the feed will be sliding. You know, it's up to you to do what you want. Um, okay. Um, and then we do error curves. No. Uh, the only other thing that I want to do is make sure that it is a loop. Um, otherwise, the idle will only play once. And we'll set that to loop. And I do that for both the idle and the run. Same thing. Um, and then afterwards, um, okay, uh, so we got our animations now, and then we go into here, and then our animations, I've created this animation controller, we're going to create a new one, create animation controller, um, so AC, uh, Zoe, and this is going to be for the demo, um, and then we're going to go to our animator. Uh, this is the previous one. Oops, I created a script. I created a script instead of a uh, instead of a controller. Hold on. Create animation controller. I don't know why I did that. AC Zoe demo. Okay, uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to drop in the run and the idle. Uh, because I dropped the run in first, I actually have to set this as the default, uh, set as layer default. Um, I usually like to name these so that they're a little bit more clear, especially if you're reusing them for different characters and swapping out animations. I'm just going to make this uh, called idle. And this is going to be called run. And then we're going to create a velocity, uh, float uh, velocity. Okay. Make transition, and this is going to be if velocity is greater than zero point one. Uh, oops, I don't make it zero because if they're just moving a tiny little bit, they're just going to play the run cycle and it's going to look really stupid. <laughs> so I, I make it sure that it's a little bit higher than that. There's no exit time. I want to make sure that it plays right away. Um, you can have a little bit of an ease. That's fine. All right, um, and uh, and then we got our run cycle, uh, which will have to go back to our idle after the, after the run is uh, completed. Um, hey, Toast, welcome in. Um, that's a good question. I don't know who I am either. <laughs> I'm just here doing things. Uh, it's less than zero point one. And um, and there you go. Uh, so now the animation controller just needs to be plugged into here, uh, right there. So now she should play her idle animation and her run animation accordingly. So now she's playing her idle. That's fine. Oh, mm. Mm, what did I do? Uh, did I? Attach the animator? I did not. <laughs> I did not. I did not plug this in. Um, okay, I'm going to make sure that the player controller is in there and the animator is in there. Boom. Now it should work. Ah, there it goes. Okay, but she's still. Oh, I, I see what I did. Remember when I said, you know, have no exit time? Yeah, you gotta uncheck that from the way back too. Otherwise, it'll wait till the loop is done before it switches back to the idle animation. Which looks really dumb. Well, there she goes. She's running. Um, so now we're going to notice that uh, her sword is missing. Um, which is very easy to add. Remember we had created that joint um, underneath? Uh, where is it? There it is, our anchor weapon, which is at the origin of the player. I don't know why it's showing up over here for some stupid reason, but there you go. Um, that's very weird. I don't know why it's doing that, but whatever. 
Um, we just put the sword under there. So we go to uh, props. The sword I've imp imported meshes the sword. I'm just going to drop that sword right into there. Oh, wait, I see why. We're on the wrong player. I am dumb. Um, because that other one probably has an offset on it or something, or maybe this one does. I don't know. Something like that. Um, but we're going to put that into the weapon slot. Let's drag that in. So, um, so now the weapon is there. And because in the animation we move this joint to the hand position, uh, even though it's at, um, it's at zero, um, uh, now it will move with the player. Hack and slash time. Well, we're not going to be getting into doing attacks or anything like that. That's a little bit outside of the scope. But anyway, we got a sword now. Um, and that's that. Okay. So, is there anything else I want to show you guys? I think that's most of it. I think the only other thing I want to show was um, the fact that, you know, we don't fall. <laughs> that's, that's not great. Um, so, to fix that, uh, we're going to have to start adding in gravity. Can you change the hand? No, I can't. Um, because I didn't set that up in animation. Had I set it up in animation, I could. Um, you know what? Actually, no. No, I couldn't. I could never do that. And the reason for that is because this in animation gets constrained to the right hand all the time. If I animated it to the other hand, yeah. Um, but I wouldn't do that anyway because the animation doesn't match having it in her other hand. I'd have to have a custom animation for her other hand. Um, and if I did that, then I could have the animation have it go to a, her other hand. So it's animation dependent. Um, so whatever hand I have it snapped to in the animation is where it's going to go, right? Um, so sure, yeah, if I wanted to have an, a custom animation for the left hand, then it would just go there because I would have animated it to be in the other hand. Um, so essentially what I'm doing in Maya is I'm animating this joint to be in the position that I want it to be. Um, and then I just drop the sword in there. Um, but again, yeah, you'd have to have a custom animation for both sides. Um, and it's up to you on how do you want to do things. I wouldn't, like, if I try to make an animation that would work for either hand, it would look really stupid because ni neither hand would be moving. Um, and that sucks. All right? So it just wouldn't look pretty. Um, hey, I carried him. But anyway, let's add some gravity. So we're going to create a new variable called gravity. Um, we're going to go uh, float private float f gravity. We're going to set that gravity value to whatever we want. Um, you'll notice I add a break because um, this is for movement stuff. And now I'm talking about gravity, which is all vertical stuff. So I've, I've created a segmentation for it. And I could even uh, you know tag it too. So this would be movement. And then this would be for uh, gravity or falling slash fall plus jump. If we had ever, if we want, wanted to implement jumping and stuff, then you could do it there, right? Um, and then we have our gravity. Um, we're gonna set our gravity to whatever we want. In this case, I set it to 0.8 last time. I'm just gonna copy paste this for ease, right? And then, uh, and then we're also going to have a max velocity, max fall velocity. I'm just going to, again, copy that so I don't have to type it out. Um, so the max velocity is just uh, so that we can cap velocity so you just don't fall infinitely uh, fast. Right? And now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to do a couple things differently. So instead of um, applying things to velocity, we're going to have to create a new vector. So vector2, um, v, uh, vel no y right is equal to vvel um and then we're going to say vvel no y is equal to zero the reason why we're doing this is because this lerp is handling the movement input um dot y not uh because we're just we're just setting the y-axis to zero um and we don't want to we don't want to account for any gravity or vertical force in this in this interpolation 
Um, so that's why I, I set that to zero. And I'm just going to replace this um, with our ball velocity. Okay. Um, and then what we're going to have to do is we're going to say, um, then we're going to have our apply gravity. And gravity is going to be uh, uh, vvel uh, dot y. Uh, Uh, how am I doing this again? Uh, minus equals uh, gravity. So F gravity. Okay. And then we're going to have to set a cap for that. Um, so if the um, bell dot y is less than F max ball speed, um, then we're going to say is equal to v vel uh, so dot y is equal to um, the f max ball speed. That way, uh, it never accelerates too quickly, right? Oops, what did I do here? Oh, no equal sign here. Um, okay, and then what we do is we add this all back together. So v vel dot x is equal to v vel no y dot x, and we have to do the same thing for the z axis. All right. Um, so that should be fine. I don't know why it's erroring. Oh, whoops. This is supposed to be a vector three. Um, there we go. And uh, then we just assign this to here, and that should be fine. Um, we're going to notice that the player is going to move really slowly now, and that's because of gravity. Uh, so because the player is being pushed into the floor, um, we're going to have to give them a little bit more force to move around. Whoops. Um, pretend you didn't see that. Um, wait a minute. Dragon Girl Space Program? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, why did that happen? Hold on. That doesn't make any sense. I'm applying a negative value. Oh! Alright. Because what happens is when I hit the, 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 the maximum fall speed, I set it to a positive value of 8. Or this should be negative 8, right? Um, so it should be less than negative. Yeah. Alright. <laughs> There we go. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. There we go. So she, you, you can see she's moving very slowly now because she's being pushed into the ground. There's two solutions for this. One, you could do ground checking, um, which we're not going to do because that's a little bit out of scope. But you could ground check and then see if you're on the ground, you don't apply gravity. There is issues there because like, if you go down a hill and you, you might like start doing these kind of like step motions because you're going to stop applying gravity as you fall down the hill. Um, in the game I've been developing, I actually um, check for the ground, and if I'm close enough, I just snap the player to it, so that way when you're going downhill, you're always stuck to it, but I'm not applying gravity anymore until you jump. It's a little bit more complicated, and I don't want to get into that. Um, and then on top of that, um, another thing you could do is you could check for the ground normal and apply gravity based off of the ground normal. So if you're going down a hill, you could like apply gravity into the hill, because right now what's going to happen is because gravity is just going straight down, if you're standing on a hill, you're going to slide down it. Um, and if you didn't want to slide, you'd have to use the ground normal um, to, to do gravity. Essentially, if I was to visualize that, if we had the ground like this and our players like this, right? So what's going to happen with our current system? And again, I'm not going to fix this because like, this is, that's outside of scope. But if you wanted to fix it, I'll explain what you'd have to do. Um, so right now, gravity is applied like this, right? Um, so if you're standing on a hill, right, and gravity is applied straight down, if you got, you're going to have gravity that's down, but because it's down, you're going to start sliding down this hill, right? Because you're going to, you have a little bit of force in this direction. Um, how do I explain that? It's very hard for me to explain. Um, but anyway, because you have downward force, you're going to end up sliding down this hill. Um, so instead what you have to do is you have to like, when you're on a hill, um, you have to say like, check for the ground and then get the normal. 
and apply gravity in the direction of the floor. Um, and you can offset gravity the same way that you offset gravity in, um, for the player movement. So remember how we offset the player movement based on the camera? You do the same thing, but you use the normal that you get from the ground. So you can do a raycast. So basically you do one, you raycast. And then you get your surface normal. And then you'd apply the surface normal, uh, apply normal, normal to velocity. Okay. Um, or sorry, not to velocity, to gravity. Deflection, is that the term? Um, okay, so that's great. Um, but I digress. Uh, what we're going to be doing instead is we're just gonna be increasing the maximum speed to compensate for the amount of gravity. So I'm changing the max velocity to something like 15. Okay. And then after that, there's one other thing that I want to do, and that's add some vertical movement to the camera as well. There we go. So now we're moving at a decent speed. Cool. Um, so the next and last thing will be adding uh, vertical movement to the camera. Uh, all right, so we have our y-axis input. Um, and now we want to do our x, in, x, x input. So we're going to do uh, vertical axis, uh, or, and this is going to be x axis, sorry, x axis. And we're going to reuse that input dot variable. So f input um, is equal to input dot get axis um, mouse y. Whoops, there's a space in there. And we're going to multiply um, I did this a little bit differently. That's funny. I don't know why I did this differently, but I did. Hold on, let me parse this. Okay, sorry about that. Um, okay, so I'm gonna wing this a little bit. Times F uh, rotation speed X. Um, so we need to have an X speed. And the X speed, I don't know what variable I'm gonna set it at, um, but maybe we'll set it to like, I don't know, 100? less. There's less movement in the x, so I, I tend to make this a little bit of a smaller value. Let's try 50. I don't know. We'll, we'll play around. Um, okay. And then we're going to say this, and then this is times uh, times our delta time. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to rotate the camera based off of that. Rotate the camera x by our rotation values. Right. Um, but I'm going to set a maximum and minimum for this one. Right. So, um, oh, another thing to uh, wait, does it matter? I 
I can't, I'm not sure if this is going to be in local or not, so this might cause problems, but we'll see. We'll, we'll try this first and we'll see. Um, but F, uh, well, for now, let's, uh, no, no, no. We're going to set, we're going to make sure this is set beforehand. So F, uh, uh, or sorry, if, if, uh, hmm. We're gonna we're gonna store this in a vector for a moment. So vector three, uh, or yeah, yeah, yeah. So v um, uh, x rot um, is equal to geo uh, rotation container x dot uh, rotation. Or sorry, that transform dot local rotation dot x dot Euler or sorry local rotation dot Euler angles. Okay. And then what we're going to do is um, if uh, the x root uh, dot x um, is greater than, we're going to have to add some, some maximum and minimums. Again, I'm just going to copy these for the sake of ease. And I don't want to type it. <laughs> um, so we're going to say f max look angle. Um, set that there. And then, oops. Hmm. Not screw it. Uh, f max looks angle um, is equal to 20. And I'm going to have a maximum and then a minimum. And then a min. Uh, negative 20. Okay. Um, and then what we're going to do if this is equal to or is greater than f max uh, look angle, I'm going to say uh, v rotation. Uh, x rotation dot x is equal to this. And then we're going to say, I'm just going to copy that. Um, else, if this is less, less than min, then we're going to set it to the minimum look angle. Okay, and then we're going to do this, going to go g uh, o dot uh, which, uh, actually, let me just take all this stuff. Um, is equal to quaternion dot Euler. And we're just going to plug in the uh, V X rotation. All right. And that should do it. Okay. Watch this just completely go nuts. Oh, it does nothing. It did nothing. All right. That's fine. Oh, it's because I didn't give it an error. I'm surprised it didn't error out, though, which is concerning. Still does nothing. Um, why does it do nothing? because I'm not rotating in the x-axis. I'm rotating the y-axis. Okay. That's, that's a little bit janky. Weird. 
Now, if you want to invert this, obviously you'd have to, you know, invert the input. But you see how it feels on the controller. Okay, so when I go to a certain value, it starts freaking out for some reason. Uh, which means that I am probably setting it to the maximum value. Hmm. You know, I'm actually not sure why it's doing that. Hold on, give me a second. Let me debug. I probably should have just like followed what I had before, but I wanted to make it a little bit easier to parse. Okay, so that's fine. All right. Okay, so that's that is fine. I don't know why that the the capping was freaking out. Um, so if the rotation is greater than max, then I set it to the max angle. Oh, is it because of, um, it's when it hits zero that it freaks out. That's interesting. Um, hold on. Uh, why not use uh, math clamp? on pitch instead of branching? I suppose you could do that. What the heck? Hmm. Okay. Um, okay. So Euler local rotation. It's very intriguing. Hmm. It's letting me go past the native now. <laughs> Why? Why is it letting me do that? Okay, you know what? I'm going to do this differently because I have another way that I know will work. All right? I was, I was seeing if I could figure out a way to make it so that this, I could control both of these in the same way. And I couldn't. It was a bad idea. I should, probably should have just stuck with the original plan, um, which is fine. Okay? So what I'm going to do instead um, is I created a target look angle. Um, and we just lerp to that instead. Because for some reason it is not considering this value properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a um, private oops, float f target um, look angle 
Okay. And then F target look angle is equal to, in this case, uh, whatever our, our current axis is. So that is going to be our rotation x uh, dot uh, transform dot rotation. Ah, rotation, come on, dot Euler angles dot x. So whatever default value we have in there, which is zero, but um, say we didn't have that as a default, it would uh, set to that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do our uh, mass y, and then we're going to say, um, no, no, no. Um, I'm just making the camera move vertically, that's all. Um, nothing fancy, nothing fancy. We're keeping this very simple. Uh, okay, so what we're going to do is uh, all right, so we're going to create a vector for our look angle. Oh, I see. I see what I did. Um, okay, so we can keep this very, very simple. All right. Um, so instead of actually directly affecting the um, this rotation value, we are just going to be um, adjusting our our current our our float that we stored. Um, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to do f input uh, get access from the y and then excellent. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, f uh, input oh sorry no uh, f target look angle um, tar target look angle is equal to, or is a uh, right, plus equals uh, f input, right? Now we're just taking the input and we're applying it to a target look angle, and then we're going to apply our capping beforehand. So if um, if f target look angle uh, is greater than F max look angle. Then we're going to say F target look angle is equal to F max look angle. All right. Uh, and then we're going to do the same thing if it's less than minimum look angle. Then we're going to say F minimum, right? Uh, so if it's less than the minimum, then it becomes the minimum. And then we're going to just take uh, this value we do not need. And then uh, the rotation is fine. We still need this value because we're going to modify the, the x rotation. So v x rot dot x is equal to f target look angle. This should work. Hopefully. The thing is, like when you're getting these values, sometimes you get some some nonsense. There we go, it's working. Uh, because sometimes, like it doesn't actually give you a value that is written here. It'll give you like uh, 360 minus. So essentially, what was probably happening is when I got into the negative, it was giving me a value of 360 minus 20 instead of the value minus 20. So what would happen is I would immediately snap to the other uh, angle. Anyway, so this works now. Um, and if you wanted, again, to invert the control, that would just be a matter of uh, uh, just setting this times minus 1, right? So I'd just do like 
If I wanted to invert the control vertical, I'd just say times minus one, and I'd get the opposite. Liberal use of debug.log is a good way to go. Yeah, yeah. But I knew this was like a, a way that I could just solve it. And I don't want to like, because I'm, because I'm trying to like teach this stuff, I'm just, I don't want to do too much time on debugging. I want to make sure that it's something that works. Right? And I should have double checked that before stream and that is my fault, I'm sorry. But anyway, we got everything and I think, we didn't test this, but it should work. Yeah, now we're falling. Um, although we still play the fall, <laughs> yeah. We don't have like a fall animation or anything like that or check for ground, so obviously it doesn't do that. But that's like, that's again, stuff that you could do to expand, right? So if you want to check for the ground and see if you're grounded, you just do a ray cast down and then check for ground. And then if you hit get something back, um, you're, uh, you check the distance. And if the distance is small enough to be considered grounded, then you say the player is grounded um, and you do the regular animations. Whereas if they're in the air, you'd play your, your fall animation. Um, but that was, uh, that's about all that I wanted to cover for, uh, for implementation. Um, I just want to get you guys started. So uh, if you want to like get into like making your own game with the model that we created together, um, we can, you can uh, you can do that. I don't know why she changes angles sometimes. It's a little bit weird. Anyway, um, but yeah. So if you uh, um, you know if you guys do this and you want to share it. By all means, that's always good. I think it's because I can rotate the camera um, or something like that. And she's just rotating. Yeah, because the velocity is based off of the camera and then she'll rotate because of the camera, uh, which is a little bit strange, but it's okay. I should, what I should do if, uh, if I wanted to make it a little bit more robust is say that uh, she only rotates if the velocity is high enough, right? Uh, so if the velocity, where is it? Uh, Player controller, uh, where's the rotate player? And then if magnitude is greater than, like, again, greater than 0 0.1 or something, right? Uh, or 0 0.01 or something like that. I don't know, just like enough so that it just doesn't like pop for a very small rotation. Um, should fix that stuff. Oh, still did it. That's frustrating. Um, yeah. Anyway, there we go. What the heck? <laughs> I don't know why that's happening, I'll be honest. I have no idea. Um, oh, it's probably because of the gravity. Because she technically has a velocity in the in the y. Because she's because gravity is being applied. That's probably what it is actually. Yeah, that was it. Okay. Well, we fixed it. Good. <laughs> All right, guys. So that's it for for this video. Um, so I hope uh, anyone watching it got a little bit in. A little bit out of it, right? So again, like I'm not going too in depth. If you want, there's there's plenty of tutorials on on Unity game creation. Um, I just wanted to get something basic, um, so that you know you you kind of figure out what you don't know. I think that's the first step to learning anything is kind of getting in there and saying like, okay, what's there? What do I have to know? And and learning from there, um, which is kind of where I'm going with this this series. Uh, obviously, I can't go in and I, like make an intense, super detailed. Um, process for every single stage because I'm covering so much. Um, but I did want to get some sort of uh, base uh, done there for you. 